Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Kumar sir, Dr. Saurabh Patwardhan, uh, for this opportunity and all the panelists out here. My talk today is on uh, complete toolbox as a refractive platform and uh, no financial interest even though I do receive uh, research grants for different companies and work on different platforms. So when you talk about the complete toolbox, what are the tools which you require in 2023, as uh, Dr. Kumar sir mentioned? You need a fantastic diagnostics. You need the topography data to be connected in a very proper and healthy way to your machine. And also something, diagnostics and tools, which helps us to prevent something unexpected in today's context. So I use different platforms, but one of the things which I've been, which I call the world toolbox is for this machine, which connects both the Cirrus and Osiris from the uh, diagnostics to the laser platform of Schwinn, uh, which has different uh, generation of families, but what I use is 1000 uh, Hertz uh, machine. The first line of diagnostics starts with uh, the epithelium. The reason it's important is many toolbox softwares has a fixed epithelial thickness which you need to add. Let's say you're doing a removal of epithelium for a, say, keratoconus, or you're doing an epithelial removal for uh, PR phase. So when you look at this, the peripheral and central thickness don't always match. When you use the diagnostics here, it's 57 and Sometimes you may have a 60 in the center or maybe the opposite. So the big challenge here is how do you add this? And that becomes your first important toolbox because you are able to customize every single case you do. And say 50 to 60% of the time from divine interventions, everything goes well because most of the epithelium is uniform. You can't expect that every single time will have the same uniformity, and especially in today's context, when your ocular surface is not healthy, your contact lenses are used more than 10, 12 hours. So these are the cases which makes it more different. We have to link today whatever you have to make sure that you don't end up in this, irrespective of whatever kind of toolbox you use. And that's where the whole concept of biomechanics and newer diagnostic modalities which will come. At this point of time, these are not incorporated into your toolbox, laser machines, but I think it's time in future, like how you have the imaging system linked to your microscopes, I think all this will be one day integrated into your machines. So how do you use this toolbox to make it more optimized? Use the imaging use the data, use the language which coming from all your diagnostics and feed it into your machine. This is what a toolbox is all about. Whether you're treating a simple topography guided treatment, non-topography guided treatment, or you want to build on a presbyopic treatment. The healthy marriage is between the topographer and the laser machines. So this is what works here. And once you have all this export uh, planning, then you start looking at it. The first line of refractive surgery is let's look at PR case out here, because that's what needs a little more customization. So when you get the PR case out here, you have different uh, toolbox options here, PRK, trans PRK, if you want to remove it with alcohol, LASIK, femtolasic, and relift. This again, a customization. When you call relift, because the laser energy, when you do a relift on a cornea, the laser spots is completely different. So by mistake, you put a relift instead of LASIK, your energy settings, energy pattern is completely different. You have two options. You have an abrasion free or a customization free. Customization LASIK is more like your topo guided treatment. In Alcon, you call it as an contour. You can feed your epithelium. This is exactly what I said as the one of the first important toolbox out here. And then you can start your PR case. You can display without the epithelium. And then you will have comparison maps. It's very important because 
in the comparison maps, you start looking at what is the ablation difference. If the ablation difference is not too high, then you can choose between the CW, which is a customized wavefront. When, they, when your ablation difference is too high, it means that the cornea is irregular and the topography is correcting a lot of other ablation patterns. To understand what it really does, this is again the third important toolbox for me. There's something called as a manager. The manager here is nothing but your personal assistant, which is inbuilt into the machine, which tells you a lot of things. It tells you what are the aberrations it, we have, looking at maybe at this order, eighth order now. And then you say that I don't want to knock off everything. I want to save tissue. And you can just call the minimize depth here. It picks up the ones which can just be ignored and only corrects one which needs to be corrected. There's a huge leap in your customization because you're suddenly from just blindly, like a nuclear bomb effect, you're picking up. In this case, it's saying that you don't even treat as spherical aberration. That's important because many times we unnecessarily treat spherical aberration. You lose your depth, you lose your focus. And this is what it, and in, in this case, it's just saying treat only the trefoil and some aberrations. And what you actually achieve is you achieve a much lesser depth of ablation. You're saving tissue. And uh, we have seen that the epithelial remodeling becomes much better and easier when you use more customized approaches. The true customization has a huge role in keratoconus itself. You can look at the topo guided treatment. And what is interesting here is you have something called ocular wavefront guided treatment. The ocular wavefront looks at, it uses a pyramidal abrometer. It looks at a total wavefront of your eye. So what I do is I pick up both the topo, topo guided and the ocular wavefront guided. It's very interesting. This makes a huge impact in the way I do my keratoconus treatment because in the central ablation on a topo guided, because the topo guided assumes everything is from the cornea, the, the ocular wavefront will factor in the complete optical system and it looks at how the lens is compensating. For example, the total ablation here, the central ablation here is 28 microns. This is with the epithelium, so you cannot ignore it. And minute you do a ocular wavefront, it becomes nine microns. So in a nine microns tissue, you're able to make the cornea more regular, and which is just nine microns above the epithelium. And then for every single patient, use the same principle. Look at what you're treating, and then you go back to your aberrations. Keratoconus is like an, a, a big, uh, you know, it's like a garden filled with all kinds of aberrations, good, bad, and ugly. The machine, once you minimize the depth, it picks up what it need, really needed to be treated and what needs to be ignored. And this is what it says, that many of your things which would have normally been treated just gets ignored when you get it in gray, and the only ones which needs to be treated gets picked up. So what happens is you are actually balancing this out. You're playing around with multiple ablations. And why is it lesser? If you go back and look at the summary, if you're doing the corneal wavefront, then you're treating four diopters of coma. But if you're doing the ocular wavefront, you're treating one diopter of coma because the three diopters is negated by the lenses itself. In a young patient, you don't need to treat everything on the cornea. And because of that, your ablation comes down from 24 to 9. It's a huge, impressive way of looking at how the wavefront ablation works. It's a beautiful video uh, of accommodation. This is from the lens. It's accommodating exactly the similar way of what your cornea is doing. This is a patient who had a 6-6 vision. He did not know that he has a keratoconus. And you probe in, he has, says he has nothing. It's a, such a beautiful video of how sometimes lens can actually, it's a real time. It, uh, the Osiris is a machine which helps us to look at accommodation of all this. And this is, a, this is the software on it. And it's a beautiful way to customize it. And these patients, you don't treat them on any topo guided treatment because minute you do, the lens becomes confusing. Then it starts creating a havoc. 
So it's so important to use your diagnostics to plan what type of treatment you want to do. And you can see that this is why there is so much of a, a difference between the treatment. Some of the few examples of when you use the CW, there are times when the OW, the ocular wavefront is more because the lens is over accommodating. Then you can choose the corneal wavefront, you can do the ocular wavefront, when both you can choose either one of them. And these are a few examples of cases and how, and where you have now close to, my colleague Gairik is working on close to 12 years of uh, working and especially on this platform close to six and a half years of working. When we can't express, when we can't treat anything on the laser, we published this work of doing a very customized PTK on the cone. And uh, now we have close to five years data on it. We call it as TREC, and when, when you don't want to treat it, TREC is just a very customized ablation, and you can see that you can ablate it very beautifully at any area of the cone, and you can shave it up. And this exactly, this is a few examples of it. Phenom and this we just published in JCRS, just a few, uh, JRS a few uh, months back, and now we're getting ready with the six years data on this, very stable and it gives you more strength into that zone. This is a few cases of doing customization using the toolbox. This is a pilot uh, who had a high refractive error post RK, and you can see what I can actually manually also pick up what I want to choose, and uh, I can choose between CW, OW, and multiple options, and uh, you can see these are uh, this is what we treated, and you can see it's not great, but you can see that the cornea has become more aspheric, and he planning for his cataract surgery later. And you can see the change in the aberrations uh, itself. Uh, to true customization, we are working on adaptive optics. We are trying to use adaptive optics to see if we can pick up the aberrations truly, which needs to be corrected and not corrected. This is a work in progress. Uh, we have Dr. Reshma and Dr. Bhavya, both of them in this, in this hall, and this is what we are doing, and this is the interest of time. We can induce aberration, we can remove aberration on a, like a foropter, and that is what I can actually feed on the machine, and that's what we do, and this takes a laborious work, but this is, I think, the way to go, and phenomenal. You can see that this example clearly explains how beautifully the, the keratoconus can be corrected if you don't correct unwanted stuffs out there. Uh, presbyopia treatment can be planned. It's too short to explain everything, so I'll just quickly go into this. And uh, there are multiple types of presbyopia planning which you can customize on this. Just a few things. You can work on scar correction. This is a patient referred to me with a central scar. He had, I think, a buttonhole or the flap loss has happened. And this is a scar which had happened and this is how the bump looks it is. What we did is we customized the ablation, we removed what ablation, what we did not want. Uh, we looked at a small zone, we picked up what ablations we don't want to treat, and uh, we treated this in this fashion. And you can see that this is his post-op, and you know, these kind of cases normally would have need to go do a, even PTK will not work because a small, many small areas here would be knocked off and here, hardly changes in the aspericity of the cornea, and this entire thing disappears, and this is his quality of vision, and you can see that the whole area just disappears at one go. We, we had explained that we may need two procedures uh, for him. So, when you call it a toolbox, understand your diagnostics. You have to manage your good diagnostics with your machines. There are so many beautiful diagnostics, but sometimes, our poor understanding to connect them is what, or our or, or learning in progress prevents us to uh, connect them well. Harness the optics and aberrations. Every aberration is not bad. You need to pick up the ones, and that is very difficult today. But as a toolbox, you can try to balance it out. And uh, future of adaptive optics, I feel there's a huge role of it. Very cumbersome, very long, and extremely tedious process. But if you can bring it in, that's going to be the game changer, and this machine has the capacity to do it. And uh, I, I've used it for a lot of scar co corrections. I mean, if you really understand the way the cornea and optics behaves, this is a phenomenal leap in uh, the way it can be treated. Thank you.
you, sir. I think uh, it's a wonderful machine, but I think the man behind machine, we also need both of them, I think. So thank you so much. And it's so elaborate. I know that it may take two or three days for your lectures to understand each thing in detail. And thank you so much for the contribution. Thank you. So you stop doing uh, intax completely now? To large extent, yes. Yes. For the corneal abrasion, do you think there's a differential uh, contraction of the ciliary body and a differential relaxation of the zonules? Because, I mean, how does it compensate? Generally, we think it's like a circular muscle, and then it, when it constricts, there's relaxation of the zonule. I mean, that's how accommodation works. But the, uh, what is the mechanism of this? You know, lens compensating, and whether actually you should treat the refraction or the ocular wavefront and not the corneal wavefront because I was uh, having a discussion with Canelopolis and he says you treat the corneal wavefront because what happens is these patients will have a lot of asthenopia because of this, you know, kind yeah. of accommodation which is partially happening and all that. And then after, by about six months or so, the lens kind of relaxes and then the patient is more comfortable and then uh, they have less asthenopia. So it's, it's, uh, it's a very difficult question because all of us, are as all of us assume that the lens contracts yes. and relaxes in the same way. But if you, even if you look at your eye trace, sometimes a lot of corneal abrasion gets accommodated by, compensated yes, by the lens. This is actually a diag this is actually a video representation of that, uh, uh, what eye trace shows. But I think mentally, we have to start thinking that that whole way of what optics we have been studying may not be always the same picture. If the corneal light is coming at at an, like a prismatic angle, I feel the lens may actually accommodate into that prismatic uh, way of accommodation. To answer this question, there is no model on this, but every single model today is based on the same way as you mentioned, the way the ciliary body accommodates. But one thing we can do is, like in your eye trace, if you see a keratoconus patients, and everything is matching on the lens and this, you do, you're absolutely right, you do a topographic treatment, He's, he's going to be the most unhappy patient because the lens has used to accommodation in a different way. And what happens is for the lens to have that memory that it has to go back to a different way of accommodation, it will take six to nine months time. So that is why many times we have burnt ourselves a lot on this. They say I was seeing very well before and you operated on me. Now if I see that there is a balance, we don't even, even if it's a minus one power to be treated and he wants it to be corrected, we tell him or he will he will agree that it will take a year for him to get better. So the take-home message is we just treat the refraction, not o not only the cornea. Yes. Because sometimes there's always, a, th some people say you, you always treat the cornea and the astigmatism on Sir the cornea. That is one people when, this is a canelocolous belief, I think a lot of debate is on that yeah, because he has completely ignored the lens there. And because Alcon does not have an abrometer, so for them everything is in everything it. Is. But now they will start about it because they have the Innovice coming. And Innovice is now using the same principle. Thank you.